Hi there, Tom. How are we doing? Hello, I'm good. And you? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. So, sad news. The novel writing challenge has come to an end. Yeah. Well, yeah how are you feeling? Ah, uh, you know, a uh, bit sad that it's all over, but excited that um, all the students have taken to it and exciting that we've got the course coming in the new year. So. Absolutely. We're all very excited for that course. Um, before we start, I should probably apologise for the quality of the film. This is, of course, Edinburgh in winter. So there is only mm. so much lighting we can have. Tom, you look quite blue. I sort of look like I'm in a prison, but we'll go for the content. We'll focus on the content. Um, and it. the content is to wrap up all of the novel writing challenge, which was November 2020. Mm. I have a couple of questions from your students things that they want a little bit more detail on or just general things that they wanted to know. So, mm -hmm. quite exciting. Here we go. The first one comes from Momo, who joined us from Japan. And she would like to know, how do you decide on a book cover or illustrations? Uh, well, there's two answers to this question. One is writers don't normally decide that. Um, when you get picked up by a publisher, the publishers have people that do their book covers um, or their designs for them. So it's not really up to you, from my experience anyway. Um, however, when you're collaborating with an illustrator, um, just like the books next to me right now, uh, uh, The Edge Chronicles by Paul Stewart and Chris Rydell. <clears throat> and Chris Rydell did the illustrations and Paul Stewart wrote the story, but they did it together. Um, so that's a bit different. If you come to a publisher with an illustrator that you've been working with, then the two of you will come will come together as a package, basically. So it depends on what genre you're writing. It depends on what your collaboration looks like overall. Okay. Really good answer. So generally, it's not the author who's responsible for that. It will be the publisher who decides, but sometimes maybe an author, you have your favorite publisher, like... Roald Dahl and Quentin Blake, for example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, that's all about like the relationship between those two artists and like the era that we live in now in terms of publishing is if you go to an independent publisher, chances are that you can design your own front cover or get someone you like to do it for you. And that's the thing about independent publishers. You as a writer are much more part of that process when with established publishers, I don't think you could would expect to be. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the answer and thank you, Momo, for the question. Um, our next question comes from Tatiana, who is from Brazil, but I believe joined the course from here in Edinburgh. Um, and the question is, how do you transition from one character's point of view to the next? Mm. That's a good one. Well, again, yeah, there's multiple answers to this question where the clearest thing I can think of is George R. R. Martin with the a Game of Thrones series <clears throat> or a Song of Ice and Fire series, um, every chapter is a different character's point of view. So every chapter is close third person where we're in this character's head. We see everything from his or her eyes and mind, as I say, point of view. So that's one way where you can jump from one point of view to the next. You have chapters and that helps the reader know whose point of view we're in it helps them immerse themselves in it. It's like a you clean can do what... break. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because like lots of other writers, I've uh, read a few books where they do the same thing, but it's not close third person, it's first person. So mm -hmm. you have multiple different perspectives that are first person. That's really difficult for a writer because you have to get, say you've got seven first person accounts, you've got seven voices you need to write. When with the close third, you can get away with sounding similar because you are the writer. Of course, you're going to sound similar. Um, but another way of changing point of view is what Philip Pullman does, where in all of his books, he knows um, whose point of view he's in. So like when he's telling a scene, we're in that person's point of view, but we still get to see everything. Um, and he's a bit more liberal with his point of view. He jumps around to different characters um, and isn't as rigid with it. George R. R. Martin made up his mind with the character's point of views. Philip Pullman, can, he's a bit more, can just jump and play around with whoever he wants. J.K. Rowling goes on the other side of that, where she's really conservative, where you either have Harry or you have one 
point of view at the beginning of the novel, but you mm -hmm. never leave Harry's point of view, which is really frustrating because all I wanted to do was just jump into someone else's point of view. So it's that I would time say in the novel ways. writing challenge video where we say something negative about J.K. Rowling. Sorry if you're watching I think, J.K. We we do love the series. We really do. It's like a challenge in every video. Like, can we get one disparaging remark about her work in there? I'm so going to put that. that I'm going to put that on you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Great. So thank you very much. So the um, so different authors will obviously have different styles. And so it's it's more about deciding on who you want to see your own story from. Yeah, and how much work you want to give yourself. That's always always something to consider. Okay, our third and final question comes from Ozgi, who is from Turkey. And she says, should a writer edit whilst writing? So I think this is a question about whether you should edit as you go along or wait till the end and then edit the final bit. Yeah, and I, I think one of the final days of the challenge was called Edit, Edit, Edit. Um, I'm a keen believer in editing um, when you're done. So like, I had a friend at university who would write a page or write a chapter and it would take him ages. He would agonize over every single word. And by the end of it, basically, he had a perfect draft. But as I say, it took him a very long time to get there. I am the kind of person that will write something, it'll be done maybe in like half an hour, an hour, but then I go through a lot of drafts. Mm -hmm. um, the best piece of advice I was ever given was by my tutor at uni called Catherine Merriman, who said, every time you finish writing something, you put it in a drawer for two weeks. So then after the two weeks, you have clear eyes and you can see all its mistakes. Um, so I'm a keen believer in edit when you're done, but that's not just like you're done and then you edit it once. Keep editing, keep editing, keep playing around. Like back to Mr. Philip Pullman, he finished The Secret Commonwealth, which is a big, big book. He finished it before um, the first one of that series. So it was just sat there for about two years. But even though he finished it, he was editing it for two years and changing things. And that's why his writing is fantastic, in my opinion. So Okay, so editing is a constant process as well. Some people prefer to do it as they go along, as some people prefer at the end. I think I wish that I could put a CV in the drawer for two weeks because there's been mm. some CVs that are resumes for Americans um, that I've handed in and looked at after the deadline and gone, God, what was that? Yeah, mm. The two weeks, it, two weeks really does. It helps a lot. Yeah, I think because we had this conversation before, but like every time you finish something, at least every time I finish something writing wise, I think it's genius. I think it's like the best thing I've <laughs> ever written. And then you need that two weeks to be like, this isn't genius. The like, reality is... to set in. Uh... <laughs> yeah, expectation versus reality, that thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so Tom, those were our three questions that we selected from the students that did your challenge. Um, again, big congratulations to the challenge. We've got some really good feedback from the from the different students. Of course, some people might be watching this and they miss the challenge, but it's not all bad news, is it? Because they can join us later or into the new year. Yeah, in the new year, the novel writing course will launch and that will consist of everything we did in the challenge and new material. Fantastic. Oh, so something for returning students to come back to as well. Excellent. Indeed. Okay, Thomas, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for the challenge, and I'm, I'm sure the students would want to thank you as well. Um, guys watching, if you enjoyed this video and want to see some similar content, want to know more about Intrepid English, you can find out all the links and information in the description. And do like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what kind of videos you would like to see. Tom, thank you for joining us. You guys at home, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, my pleasure. See you soon. Bye-bye.